Hey, good morning. We're going to talk about um, some basics to using SAMS. So for new users, just to sort of get you acclimated with terms that we use and um, how to navigate through the system. We're going to talk about that today. So again, kind of like setting up our scene today. First thing we're going to talk about are some of the SAM terms so that we're all speaking the same language. We'll talk about how to get into your settings. Um, the difference between a form and a doc in SAM, which is going to come up in our terms, but we'll also kind of elaborate on that and show you what we mean and where you can see those different things. We'll touch on reports and then how you can get help and support from our team. So first um, up are our SAM terms. Um, entity tabs and record types are going to be those major um, colorful tabs at the top of your screen. We'll show in a second. There are also um, the main types of records that you have in your system, like children or families or organizations that you work with or people that work on your work in your team or that are linked to your client records in some way. What's that? Tables and fields are the database. It's what makes up a database. Um, every database in the world is made up of tables and fields, and it shows the relationships and the data that you want to um, track about your client records. So what I mean is on the child record. Hey, Heather, did you join? I did. Hey, <laughs> it's hey. me and I'm recording. So, hey, I was going to go through this new user training. And because you're new uh, or not new, <laughs> rather, to the system, I'll make it a little bit relevant to you in case you guys do have somebody that's new. Oh, good. Okay. okay. That's cool. fine. Thanks. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome in. Um, so, yeah, so I was kind of going over what we're talking about today, which are SAM terms being that um, the entity record tabs at the record types at the top tables and fields is what i was describing now which are you know the backbone to every database in the world is tables and fields and it shows the relationships and then the values that you want to see uh the, we're going to talk about the difference between forms and documents because i think that's a term that's used interchange or those are both terms used interchangeably but in sam forms mean data entry points for your team or end users documents are uploadable um electronic versions of forms or for documents that you you're collecting um so to make those separations um checklists are your workflow and which can be a combination of action items and like like sending an email or that an orientation class needs to be taken or recorded and um documentation uploads Checklists can be used for internal users and external users being your end users like your family. So you can share that and that visibility. Templates are communications that are sent out of SAM. It can also be used, templates can also be used for statements or printed documents, but templates are used to keep a consistent message, but pull, make it personalized to that record that you're pulling from, because it'll pull information from that record directly. So like their name or their um, address or birth date or any other demographic or case information that you're collecting. Reports are then a, um, um, a group of records, generally. Um, it's a way of seeing the records so that you'll see them in bulk. So lots of children or lots of placements or um, all the post adoption reports that you need, it will be a way to pull them all together. And then auto actions are how we automate things. So those are the terms and we use them throughout our help guides and in speaking with our support teams so that you can, um, uh, so that we're all, we're all using the same terminology and it, it just helps us all flow a little bit better. So settings that your team needs to do, let me log into Sam. Go in here. Oops, log into the system and I'll show you where settings are at. Let's get this up to regular size. So settings that new users will need to manage are generally gonna be found under settings. Um, new users are really going to set up they won't see, most users are not gonna see the settings that I see here or that you can see here, but what they do see are user settings. So customizing the report menu is the sh 
reports that are shown on the home page when they log in. So let me just jump back to that real quick so we see it. It's these here, and it allows that user to choose other reports that they have access to to pull on their home page so that they don't have to go through here and kind of find them. So it's a way that they can edit. It literally is the same link as clicking here. Um, other settings is username and password. So um, a username and password are generally going to be granted by a SAM admin on the record or um, for this client. Um, but the user can say, you know, I don't like my username being that, or I don't want my password. The first thing that they should do is change their password when they're given a password, but they may want to change their username to something they're more familiar with. So a lot of times I set up usernames with like first initial last name. You can see in my case, I'm using my first name and then the password, um, I would click here and reset what was there and it'll give me, um, here. I have to input the old password that was presented and then change um, to a new password and confirm that password. Pretty simple things that people do on a regular basis um, with all systems. You then change your time zone. So your agency may have a default time zone, which is where their headquarters are. If you have something different um, because you're in a different space, you can change your time zone, which then will um, make communications and other timestamps show up in your time zone. Um, then the, the last thing and the main thing that people need to change are their email settings to um, check that they have emails enabled or that they want to send emails out of SAM and that email importing is enabled if your team is gonna be using that feature. You'll type in your email address and then the username and the password. A lot of times the username is your email address itself, could be something different that's in your email settings with your email provider. Um, and this setting needs to be done after your team's default email sending settings are done. So um, you won't do them, they won't work if the default aren't set up. So that needs to be done first. Um, and just in case um, the new user is a SAM admin themselves, default email sending, sending settings are set up here. And only users with full admin access can see this. So um, uh, that would be a SAM admin. Let's go back over here. Those are those settings. So the difference between forms and docs, let's um, talk about that. There are lots of different form types, but starting from the home page, home page is not something that you really can customize except for your report menu. And then your SAM admin can add different ad forms shown here for your team, but essentially this is sort of um, uh, a canned form. However, once you get into looking at client records, a lot of the forms from here on out can be customized in it whatever way that your team really wants to see. So different types of forms that you'll find in the system, the cover page. Cover page has a couple of different categories um, attributed to it. One, it's the cover page, which is the landing spot when you are looking up a record. It'll be displayed here. This is also a view form. So it will, it's better at displaying information than being a form that your agency will use to enter information. Um, on view forms, the information um, is displayed, but I can click field by field and make um, changes if I wanted to, okay? But if I click edit family, this is gonna show us an edit form. And once it opens up here, We'll be able to see it looks a lot different than a view form. These types of forms are set up for data entry so that I can tab through and um, type in information more quickly. Okay, so I can just kind of like toggle through the system and see everything, and all of the fields are editable, which is why it is um, called an, um, excuse me, why it's called an edit form. Um, the add forms that are shown um, on the home page or on any of the tabs, okay, different tabs here. These are also edit forms. When you click on, you can go and edit. Okay. Um, okay, so, the, so forms are used for data entry. They're data entry points there. Um, 
in contrast, a document is going to look like this. So I'll actually go um, to the document section, which is available on all of the main entity types. But a document in SAM is going to be, once I select what type of document it is, it's an upload field. So I can actually choose a document. Stick in. Uh, I'm not sure that'll go in. I'm not sure that's going to, I don't want to use that one. Uh, 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 what am I going to use? There. That's perfect. Perfect um, document here. So I can upload this document here. I can put other notes about it if I like. And then this is my latest document that I uploaded and I can download the document so that we can see it. Um, these are how documents work and that's the difference between a document and a form. In SAM form, again, is data entry. Documents are uploads. Documents can be found, um, these document upload fields can be found on other forms. And if they're found on other forms and a document is uploaded, that document by default automatically goes into this document section as well. So that you, this is, this is kind of the, seen as the full repository for the documents. Um, they can also be shown though on checklists. And where a document is listed, it's shown in these gray folders until which point I upload a document. And I'll choose us again. Go ahead and grab that document here. So uploaded, it feels very much the same. Um, and it changes into a blue, marks the date of completion. And this document is then pullable here as well from the checklist. So a couple ways that you can see forms and documents on records. Oops, that was pushing me right into where I wanted to be. Um, so then the other thing that we'll talk about here is reports, just so that you know how to, new users know how to access reports. Go back to Sam. Reports are generally going to be accessed from the homepage. So again, this report menu is um, custom to me. It's the reports that I access most frequently, and I can click and access these reports. So just clicking on the name of it will bring up that report. Um, I'm able to sort and filter from the columns, you know, sort ascending or descending, and I can filter out where values are empty or, or those that values or those records that have values here. I could also do a more advanced search. Um, I can buy that particular column, okay, is what I'm pulling here. You can do a search from any other table or field that's pulled on this report. So I could pull things about the case that um, may or may not be, rel um, be shown and displayed on this report itself. And so it can get really advanced and it's sort of dependent on what is the purpose of your report and what is it that you're trying to look for. Um, other things that you can do on report is actually edit the value. So I could end this placement from the report. I could assign a social worker. I can also click, if there's a value in the report, I could filter by that value or exclude that value. So I can kind of manipulate what records we're seeing on the report from within it. And I could also change the value of that report. Um, calculations can be shown. If um, I have the report narrowed to records that I want to do something with. I have options, which are, I could send, um, I could print this report, I can send a bulk email, or I can print templates. And so templates, again, are those um, messaging that kind of pulls in the people's name or other information about their case that you want to share. I can export to Excel. And under advanced options, I'm not sure if this is only available for full admins or not. Um, but there are a couple of options here to print address labels, export all the email addresses so that you're just pulling all the email addresses into a uh, little box that you could use as a BCC or import into another email utility that you might be using. But you could also bulk update the records and I could give all of these, say every, every youth on this um, report is now like the ongoing social worker is myself. 
So I can change all their records with one swoop rather than having to pick individually. I could also insert records. So maybe all of these people came to a picnic or um, some other group counseling session that we held. I could insert a communication record or a counseling note or some other type of record on their system, um, excuse me, on their record that updates all the records again in bulk so that I don't have to go one by one and add the same information to all of them. Um, and I think that's it as far as, let me jump back over here, over to reports. Yeah, so our next you know, call is gonna be on June 3rd. We'll talk about checklists. And at this point, I'm gonna open it up to Heather to find out what kind of things um, are happening in your world and what kind of things that you might want to know and might be helpful. And actually, let me pause that. I'm gonna show you some other things real quick. Heather, you can go ahead and unmute yourself whenever you like. But one thing for you that we've been working on um, is in our guides is the get started. So we've been working on making this information more easily available and, and concepts that um, need to be understood for just using a software system and really like SAM or any other. The tour of SAM is just that. So it kind of gives the overview and the terminology that we talked about, but also how, what are your options for getting data in and templates. So these are things that you could absolutely give to new users that are coming on to just, um, they're full of videos. Um, to help you and and then guide information as well, right? So whether you need to see it or you want to read it um, That information is available here um, If You're a little bit further or in a SAM admin this implementation success guides give you a similar feel but like They start to get you into what kind of questions do you need to have answers to or to start making decisions on? So how do you setting up your current data? You know, are you going to do a data entry? Are you going to do a data import or a data migration? And starting you on thinking that process through. So just know that those, those tools are available for you. We're constantly really like updating this to make it more clean and more concise. Um, yeah, that's what I have to say today. Thank you for joining, Heather. Sure. Well, yeah, what yeah kind that's of good to know. Good, okay. This year, do you think that you guys would use this part? I mean, you've been using SAM for a long time. I don't know exactly how long. Yes, um, but I think definitely for as we're, you know, I'm working on creating um, a lot of checklists kind of thing. We're, as, especially for the home study process, as our social workers are using, going to be using SAM just while they have active clients, that you know giving the tour of sam there will be helpful for them since you know it's kind of like enabling their access while they need it disabling it just because of the cost mm -hmm. um you know i think that will be helpful for them good okay okay cool yeah. and it should take really um my under i have not done the um math on it but i my understand that my teammate has and she said it's under 20 minutes to view all of the videos so the first one oh, I think is a six okay. minute video but the rest are like under three so that it should be quick to nice. get through. And um, yeah, that's so good. Yeah, I like, think there is over here, we added actually in this section to um, all of the videos all in one place. Because while you may have watched it at mm. one point in time, watching them, seeing them all again, this is all of the five that we've built um, in the last month or so, all pulled together. Okay. 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 Which is probably, that's, that's probably the link that you want to give them. Um, yeah, cool. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Um, I, know, I really don't have anything. I mean, I, I just wanted to join in and kind of see what you were covering and I'll send this out to my, to my group, you know, for anyone that wants to um, get familiar with Sam and uh, send the videos. So yeah, that's good stuff. Cool. Awesome. Is there anything, um, that you would like to hear webinars on. I was kind of sort of planning on next month is to talk about checklists again, because that's really mm -hmm. um, the big topic right now. So checklists yes. or um, family portal stuff is what I've been working on tremendously with clients. Curious if yeah, that's- Yeah, I would say that those two for me, definitely. Okay, okay. 
All right, cool. So yeah, I'll show some temp, um, some ideas of what people are doing with the checklist that are different than how they were intended, but totally work. And um, so you can see, you know, what people are doing. So I think that'll, that'll be exciting next month. Curious for you, would you join? I, I'm sort of thinking of how we can support agencies through the crisis that we're in um, a little bit better. I was thinking potentially opening up another like open hours webinar where it's just come mm -hmm. and join for a call if you want. Would that be helpful to you? Do you find like, would you think that you might jump on? Yeah, with, with, other, with other SAM admins from other agencies. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be wonderful. Yes, okay. I would love to collaborate with them, yeah. Okay. Definitely. All right. Cool. Yeah. That's sort of what I'm thinking is to have this style of webinar once a month and then another open hours, community hours that we can just get together and say, this is what we're doing. And what do you need? What kind of support do you need to get that done for your team? Or how do you envision it? Great. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. And definitely as, as agencies are going through reaccreditation process and IAMI and Department of State, you know, all that, so, yep. you know, anything we can all, you know, talk through things and, and learn from each other, I think would be very beneficial. Okay. Okay, cool. Cool. Well, I will put that into play um, as quickly as I can to try and get one out, maybe get a, a time scheduled for us in May really to kind of support okay. you guys through this um up and coming do you guys are you upcoming are you upcoming with accreditation yes we are ours is scheduled for august august okay mm -hmm. early august and we just got our self-study all submitted uh last week okay wait say that one more time the the study we had a self-study oh okay. you go through all the different chapters have to upload everything to their portal Okay. So all of our case records and home study records and foreign service, uh, you know, providers and, you know, everything. So that's pulling a lot of reports out of SAM? Yes. A lot of SAM stuff. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. All yeah. right. And it was in preparation for those and pulling those reports. Did you have any issues? Cause you didn't reach out to me for that. No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, I think one thing that was kind of difficult was trying in one report to get, which I was, it wasn't possible for like case records because, you know, you go back, you know, three years or four years. So it was like 2016 and on. So for some families, like, you know, use like application fee receipt or something like that. You use one thing to try and pull all those and, you know, you just, it's hard to get all of them, you know, together, the ones that are placement dates that, it, that came home during that time, as well as, um, you know, got started and may, may still be waiting, you know, kind of thing. So that was, I think, difficult, but I, I think we, we managed pretty well. Okay. So does that mean to you, Heather, like determining if a case is active in a mm -hmm. time period, is that, is that sort of what you're saying? And so you had to figure out which date is yes. consistent for all? cases yes right okay. exactly i think that's a good might have been conversation. an exception mm -hmm. yeah no mm -hmm. it's a really good conversation we get asked on a regular basis kind of how do we find active in a time period and it it depends on your um on the fields that your team is entering for sure for sure right um and if, like you said, for years back, you may have been doing something one way and now you're doing things a little bit different. And so finding right. consistency, am I hearing that right? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Okay, yep. yeah. And so I think that's a bit of one, I mean, there's always decisions that have to be made and like data cleanup, but I think this is an excellent topic to talk about with um, the SAM admins that are using the system. Um, I think that's mm -hmm. a great, uh, like active case and how management of the case. We've been getting a lot of questions about that. So that'll be maybe our first topic for May. Like, okay. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Great. Cool. Um, everything going well over there for you guys Is working from home working. Okay. Yes, it is. Thankfully, we're, you know, we went to 365 a couple a few years ago now. So thankfully, you know, we're okay. all able to access everything beyond SharePoint, um, you know, using Teams for a lot of meetings and um, we're able to have, you know, we have the, the VoIP phones as well. So it's over the internet. So we can even have like our office phones at home. So okay. it's, it's actually, we were at a very good place to be able 
to do this. So thankfully business goes on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. And have you guys seen a decrease or anything in families like applications and things like that? Or I just... feel like we, I thought it would be worse. Um, I feel okay. like it, it, we continued receiving applications and a lot of interest and then it kind of dropped off for a little bit. Now I think it's back again. Um, okay. Okay. So as maybe things are starting to reopen again, people are getting more positive and yeah. And you know, I think this is picking, picking up more now. Okay. Okay, cool. Good. Yeah. Okay. That's good to hear. Yeah. No, I hear differing things from different people, but for the most part, it sounds like child welfare is held fairly steady. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. I, but yeah. So um, interesting. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. I appreciate Heather, you joining the call today. I was sure. not sure I was, you know, having that like, what am I doing this morning? Do I go on bike ride? What do I do? I'm tired of being in my house. <laughs> I know I'm with you. <laughs> Thankfully I'm a runner. So I like to get out and get my runs in and I feel much better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I bet you do. No, I am a runner too. That, uh, don't do it like I should. <laughs> so, I'm like, um, yeah, it's, it does help tremendously. And I think that it does. Is, I, Everyone I, needs that outlet. Yep. I may very well just jump off this call and go run and then upload. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Well, it's good to talk to you. I'm glad to hear from you and um, got some ideas to carry forward and us have a community call for a couple weeks or so from now. Great. Happy to help. Okay. Thank right, you, thanks. Stephanie. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.